We're less than two months away from the, uh, more like six weeks, the November 3rd presidential election. Um, and I, I have to tell you that the election winner uh, will not be believed uh, if the coronavirus death tolls uh, reach 250,000 deaths by Thanksgiving. At present, I think we're at 198,000 people that have died, according to Johns Hopkins University stat count. But by, by the weekend, we will reach, we will cross the threshold, a milestone of 200,000 people. And by November, the, by Thanksgiving, November the 23rd, 24th, whenever it shall be, another 50,000 people dying, and could be a lot more than that, I think. 50,000 50, is conservative, it will make the November 3rd election, if it runs into a recount and a recount and a court count, uh, will not be and will never be believed. Uh, then what does that mean? Well, it means a lot of things. If the election that of November 3rd will never be believed, uh, then we will never, then the government of, of America and its democracy and constitution will have find itself gone with the wind, of blowing in the wind. So we're facing some extraordinary times. Uh, Macy's parade, uh, the, the, the long since R.H. Macy parade, there's been a tradition for, I, I don't know how many years, 80, 90 years, maybe longer here in New York as a Thanksgiving Day event. Will not happen this year, the first time I think they may have delayed it once in World War II or something like that, I'm not sure, but it has been a tradition that brings millions of people to New York for the hotels, for Thanksgiving and celebration, and then they line up on 8th Avenue to watch the uh, Snoopy and whoever else that flies, the, you know, those balloons. It ain't gonna happen this year because of coronavirus. Um, which ought to give you some idea of how the impact of coronavirus is having on social events. And the other item, of course, is that the, the election itself, even by, we're now at the, in the middle of uh, the latter end of September, we'll have all of October, so we've got 40 some days. Uh, you're gonna see the, uh, the process of the uh, ca campaigning between both Tribulation Trump and Dementia Joe uh, going to intense like you've never ever seen. It's already off the charts. We've probably never seen anything like this before, except for maybe Lyndon Johnson's Daisy Cutter uh, when he ran against Barry Goldwater, and the uh, saying Barry Goldwater would, you know, actually use the nuclear bomb. But that was an aside event. It wasn't the way what we see going on now with the viciousness of this campaign. Um, and the two sides that are dug in. And I think that the problem, what we're going to have going forward is just unprecedented. Um, and we, uh, one need to adjust themselves. And I would say to you uh, as best you possibly can, if God Almighty will allow you, you know, if Thanksgiving, there are 250,000 people did, what do you think Christmas and New Year is going to look like? It's not going to be a very pleasant time. Uh, and if another 50,000 people die, and even though they're talking about a vaccine, and they may have a vaccine, I'm not taking it if they get one, I can tell you that right now. I'm not telling you not to take it, but I ain't taking it if they get one. Uh, because I don't know, you know, anything that's rushed through as quickly as they're rushing this thing through, I just ain't taking it. But even with a vaccine, it, the best that they could possibly do, it would not reach the general public until sometime in late January, early February, at best, at best, before the general public could get vaccine against this coronavirus. So there's really nothing standing in the way of this coronavirus now except a mask, if you believe the coronavirus. Maybe you don't believe, maybe you think it's a hoax. All right, okay, fine, then you go ahead and we, we won't, we're not fall out as, as friends. It ain't a hoax. But, so, we are looking at you know, people who have had the doctors say to them, uh, even in their youth or in their older age, you've been diagnosed with cancer and it has advanced and we have not been able to, uh, 
uh, to stop it and catch it early enough to really have an effective training. When someone hears that kind of news, you don't want to be that person in those shoes. Or better yet, when someone hears the news that their child has been diagnosed with cancer, you don't want to hear that news as well. There, there are some things that uh, you've never been there, many of you, you've never been there. You've probably had some bad times and, you know, but there's some places you've never been before in terms of bad news and the readjustment of your life and that which grips your life and you'll never return back to normalcy again. But the coronavirus is cancer to America and it's, it's stage four cancer to America that, and it wasn't caught in time to be able to stop it or prevent it. And the only option left is the worst kind of treatment, chemotherapy or some other kind of treatment, but even that ain't gonna stop it. It's just gonna prolong your days by a week, but you're suffering by a multitude. And that's what coronavirus is on a global scale, but specifically here in America. This is a wicked mamma jamma. It is. There have been events much more wicked than this. I, I took the time and looked at the 14th century play called The Black Death that ran across Europe. I didn't do a lot of study of that, either in undergraduate or graduate work, but I looked at it casually. I was interested in it. And one of the things that brought me to it in seminary study was the fact that they were trying to, to protect the Pope from c contracting, because it, it looked like it was crawling into windows. No matter how you locked yourself away from it, it was catching everybody. And they tried to protect the Pope from getting it. And many of the cardinals around the Pope, but bishops and priests and cardinals were all dying but they wanted to make sure somehow or another. So everything around him was purified. Nobody was able to come near him. You, 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 you look at Tribulation Trump now and the testing that goes on around him now, and you look at what happened in the Black Death and, and, and how it, young people, old people, and then the, the, the Roman Catholic Church or the Catholic Church then set out a group of people put together an idea that after the priest had prayed that they would purge themselves, that they would punish themselves for whatever it was that they had done that God was bringing this black death and punishing them, they would punish themselves and they, they formed a religious group called the Flagellates. And they would take a leather strip about three feet long and then they would put nails and bits of glass and rock in that leather is three feet and an inch long, and then they would tie it up in that, and then they would beat themselves till blood ran out of their backs, uh, and they would just punish themselves, hoping to be able to please God to stop the black death, but it continued to march, and millions were killed. So what we're looking at now is only being staved off because of the fact there's been some modern understanding, but this coronavirus thing, it's, it, is, it is received, it is, it is, you're being told by the doctor, America has been told by the doctor that America has four stage cancer and it wasn't caught early enough and treated early enough to be able to stop it. So the only thing you can do now is just hope that it runs its course. But death is imminent, there's no doubt about it. So I, it's important for us and those of us who have received bad news in our lives, and those of us who have gone through perhaps the worst of times in our lives, those of us who have understand this, and I, I, I think that one of the problems you may have with some people who are not dealing with the coronavirus and a reality is that they've really, really never received any truly, truly bad news. Not, not really bad news. They, I mean, they've had bad things happen, but they've been able to recover from it, but they've never been told they have cancer, or they've never been told their child has cancer. They've never been told that someone that they love was brutally murdered. They, they, they've, never, they've never gone through that, and a lot of people like that. And, I, I, and until a person receives, they probably will not, don't fully, until you, you don't fully understand 
you know, when I was watching early on in this year, those people being intubated and the hospital in East Elmhurst, Queens, where the, those refrigeration trucks were out there, there are generations of people who've never seen anything like that before. They've never seen, and, it, and this business of being intubated, you, you've never seen anything like that. And by the way, let me say parenthetically, for all of you members of Atla, I prayed feverishly and fervently for you that you didn't have to, that you didn't come down with this coronavirus and that you didn't have to be intubated and that you didn't have to someone stand on the side of a glass window, can't even come in and the nurses and doctors are telling you that you are dying and they tell the family to come and you got to know you got to look at through a glass window and say goodbye, knowing you're going off to death and don't even know what death is. You have no idea where death is or where, it, where it's going. And what's worse, you know, husbands and wives have died in the same hospital. And you are a 49 year old man looking at your 47 year old wife and your children and not knowing if they got the virus and they gonna die as well. No, you, you, you don't know what this is like, but it has been, this coronavirus is, is stage four cancer to America. And by Thanksgiving, we're gonna have it compounded by the fact that America's gonna be in absolute turmoil because of the presidential election and because of the cultish behavior of Americans and because of the insidiousness of groups like Black Lives Matter, or if you will, white supremacists or whoever, and the, the racial divide, and the, 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 the problems of the, 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 the problems that exist can be summed up with this. God and the Holy Ghost is no longer in America, except, and I'll say this, and you'll get, you'll get bent out of shape as a result of it, but you can't refute it. Except for James David Manning, you're not going to get any truth. You're not going to see the work of the Holy Ghost. You're not going to hear the power of God's word. Now you'll look at me and you'll figure, well, you're just up there in Harlem. You know, you got a handful of people. You can't be the one. <laughs> you can't be the one. Surely, surely the one that God, we, you will accept the fact that America, that God has deserted, God has left America, but we'll accept the fact that maybe it's Joel Osteen because look at all the people that are following him. Then you haven't read the, met the passage. That straight is the gate and narrow is the way and few there be that find it. But broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Maybe you've not read the Bible. No, we're in, we're in the tribulation period. I think until we you come to terms on Saturday. So what's Thanksgiving Day going to be like? It's, it's just around the corner. And it comes on the heels of what may not even be by Thanksgiving. We may not know who the president is. We may not know by then. We may never know who the president of America is. We may never, ever know who is the president of America. And even if we do, it may not be the America of the Constitution and the Republic for which it stands. We may never. That may be lost. One final thing, and I promise not to inflict myself upon you any further. I've, been a, I've lived in Harlem for 40 years. I've been a pastor for almost that same amount of time. I don't run with a lot of friends. I don't go with boys night out, that kind of thing. But I study people and I pray. And I have to tell you that we've not seen a time like the time in which we are presently living. We've not seen it. And what I'm existing, when I see a pastor like J.R. Bryant, Dr. Bryant's church, Legree Baptist Church, torn down, a man that blood, sweat, and tears to build, to buy that movie theater, to start the Legree Baptist Church, or just down the street from me, the Honorable Dr. John Paul Ladson, who founded the Second Canaan Baptist Church and built that church in South Carolina Geechee, who couldn't even read, but he built that church in a strong membership. And to see some young man come in and sell it to the Sodomites to build an apartment building. And I look across the community of this beautiful, beautiful community, lost to homosexuality. It's almost like Harlem. It's not Harlem. It's not Sodom. 
and Gomorrah. But people who don't know Joseph, who don't know God, don't even realize how wretched this is. But if you can just for just a moment come up close and think with me for just a moment that churches are being torn down and people are no longer attending churches and that the, re the relationship of the power of God is no longer in the communities. And maybe you can see that. And you can also see with much, much understanding that Jesus is not going to return to these people, all these churches, they're gone. The reason why that's important, because the Constitutional Republic of America is also torn down. It's also been sold, whether to Russia or to China or to Black Lives Matter, it too has been sold. And the buildings and the men that work so hard to build this Constitutional Republic, it's all gone. And you got the likes of Black Lives Matter or you got the likes of thugs like George Floyd being, being characterized with wings on his shoulder and given a funeral fit for Jesus himself. Or you've got a Jacob Blake or Rayshard Brooks or Trayvon Martin. All of this debauchery being lived, that which is evil is now being called good. That which is wicked is now being called righteous. And that which is righteous is now being called wicked. You got people transforming their genitals, just transforming God's divine plan for their genitals, whacking them off. And you got people like Dwayne Wade in agreement with his son with the whacking off of God's appointment of his genital and gender status and whacking it all. Well now wickedness is being called righteous and righteousness is now being called wicked and there'll be no returning. There, there, there'll be no returning. There's a hope. There's a vision. There's a prophecy. Call out love. Out love. Out love. A hope, a plan. Is there any word from the Lord? Yes, there is. And let me say thank you. Those of you who have the wisdom to know this is God's place. God bless you. Oh, oh, you, you need to shout, shout, because the rest of the world is lost. It's just... So the th coming Thanksgiving this year is going to be unlike anyone you've ever seen. Christmas, New Year, the like. And this November 3rd election, even before we get there, and we don't even know if both candidates will be around to cast their own ballots on the 3rd of November. We're in the cancer of America, and it's reached stage four. I'm James Evan Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord Servant. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he. I'm the Lord, sir. James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.